Hi everybody, my name is Jason and this is Nicole and we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel and we thank you guys very very much for hanging out with us. We really really appreciate it. <clears throat> what we're investigating here and what we're going to be going over is something that is extremely well it's divisive in the Torah group. It is, it is so divisive that most people um, well, it's a fighting. It's a, it's a point of contention. And you will have people that are so set in their ways that they will absolutely, with, without a shadow of a doubt, not listen to any evidence, will not research this. And this is a very important topic. The entire calendar thing is extremely important. Now, I don't, and I'm not going to say that we haven't figured out, but what I do believe is that we are on the right path of it. And what we are able to discern and decipher is some ways that we shouldn't be keeping it. And that's kind of what we're gonna focus on right now. We're gonna focus on a little site right here called TorahCalendar.com. And TorahCalendar.com is, well, to us, it feels very Judaistic. Like this is very much leaning in the ways of the Jews. And it's been defended by friends of this site by people that say they are, yes, they're, they're Jewish, but they're good brothers and they're messianic and here and there. But we have certain things that we are told to do. And one of them is when we are adding and removing things from the Torah, we're breaking a command by doing such a thing as that. Now, Torah calendar, the reason that we're talking about Torah calendar is because they released this document. And this document, they say, is their, um, is basically the rebuttal of why the Zadok, the Zadoki calendar is incorrect and why it is um, not to be used. Now, one of the first things I want to go over first is Exodus 12. And this is, uh, it's Exodus 12, 2 right here. This is what we're talking about, <clears throat> um, the new year. Because this week, according to the Zadok calendar, we would have had a new year. And so we would be in this. This is the, the command right here. This is the, the, the verse, Exodus 12, 2. This month is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. And then it goes into Passover and it goes into all of this. The problem is we as a people do not have the understanding on what is a new month because there is a tremendous amount of evidence that is pointing us in scriptures that when they keep saying new moon, that there is no word in Hebrew for new moon like they are talking about and what they put in. So every time that we are talking about a new moon, there needs to be a lot of research done on this. There needs to be some uh, understanding, some basic education in this. And so we have come to the conclusion that we do not believe that the new moon means new month at all in scriptures. And so there's a, that is not the point of this video. The point of this video is to go over Torah calendars, understanding of what they believe is the truth. Now, if this is how the part of the Zadok calendar is reached as far as the understanding goes. This is from Enoch 7232. And this is how to find this is mystical. Is this correctly? The, the equinox, correct? On, yes. This is from e Enoch 7232. On that day, the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts. And the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to its day, 364. Now, when you read Enoch and you bring the rest of these things into play, there is something to this because we just passed this time of year that this falls on, the, the, 30, the 32nd verse of this. Now, I'm going to go into a calendar, and this is the actual Zadoki calendar. And if you look at this, let me give me a second here. I need to, to stop my dog from, like, going crazy. When we look at this right here, this is the 2024-2025 calendar. Now, this week, it would have been on the first of the year. This would be one second. All right, so looking back at this, this is the day of the week, 320. So is this this month, last Wednesday, three or four days ago, If you, I don't know when you're watching this video, but this is the head of the year. This is according to the Zadok calendar. And so based upon the Zadok calendar, and let's take us a quick look over at another scriptures right here. This comes out of Jubilees 6, and we're going to start at 34 and read this as well. 
And all the children of Israel shall forget, and shall not find the path of the years, and shall forget the new moons, and seasons, and Shabbatoth, and they shall go astray as to all the order of the years. For I know, and from this time on, I shall declare it to you, and it is not of my own devising. For the book is written before me, and on the tablets of the Shimeen the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the festivals of the covenant, and walk according to the festivals of the Gentiles after their strain and after their ignorance. For there shall be those who shall assuredly make observations of the moon. Now it disturbs the season and comes in from year to year, ten days too soon. For this reason the years shall come upon them when they shall disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of witness and an unclean day a feast day. And they shall confuse all the days, the Kodesh with the unclean and the unclean with day with the Kodesh. For they shall go astray as to the months and Shabbatoth and festivals and Yobelim. For this reason, I command and witness to you that you may witness to them. For after your death, your children shall confuse them. So they shall not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they shall go astray as to the new moons and seasons and the Shabbatoth and festivals. And they shall eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. All right. What do you have to say on the mystical? So if you go by the moon and do it. By the new moon, which we don't know whether what the new moon is, but if you do that, it's 354 days. So it is 10 days short, and it also explains in Enoch that the moon is 10 days less than the sun as well. Okay, so this entire thing that we're doing here with Torah calendar, and if we go to Torah calendar and we look at their 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 actual calendar, um, it says that Passover is very very soon. So if we take a look at Torah calendar, who will we'll see exactly how they calculate this, but they aren't where we are at at all. Um, in fact, uh, they have it. They had rush. What is this spiritual new year? Yeah. So they started March 11th. So March 11th. Actually, March 12th. Basically. March 12th. And their Passover is going to be, I think they say tomorrow. 14th or when are they saying the, the 14th is Pesach so Monday so Monday is when this place to our calendar has their Passover now this looks all fine and dandy until you actually go and figure out how do they calculate what they calculate right here and the question that people nobody can answer is when those who say that the the new moon is a new month nobody can tell me or anybody what a new moon is we have these old timers that will say, well, the new moon is completely black. Doesn't matter anything else if that's the new moon. They have nothing to back that up. They have nothing other than their own ways and they will not take a look at it. Now you have people like uh, other folks like Torah Calendar. They say the new moon, the, the new month isn't until around 3% when the, when the moon is, is lit. Now the other folks say it's about 1%. So right out of the gate, you have all of these people that will be on the wrong calendar because they will still be coming up 10 days too short, which is why they add this satanic 13th month to things. There's no such thing as a 13th month in scriptures anywhere. No such thing. Now, what we want to do is we want to not expose to our calendar because I'm sure they are good brothers and sisters, but they put out a hit piece called the era of the Zadok calendar. And if we want to look at anything, we need to study to show ourselves approved unto Yah workmen who needeth not to be ashamed as we rightly divide this word of truth. And that's what we have right here is we have the word of truth. So we're going to read through this and we're going to see what these people at TorahCalendar.com say about the errors of the Zadok calendar. First and foremost, I would like to remind everybody that when we pull things outside of Deuteronomy, when we have an entire collection of books that are Judaism and they are not in Torah, it is it is real sketchy. The thing about the book of Enoch is our Messiah and everybody else has quoted this over and over and over. So why are they quoting a book that is not in scriptures? Why is it not in scriptures is the question and who took it out of scriptures and why? So when you get back into the book of Enoch, it is very clear what our world is, if our world spins or if it doesn't, how things line up, and all of this. So let us begin with the error of the Zadok calendar according to these people. And this is um, very interesting because they say irrefutable proofs for the creation calendar as taught by Torah calendar. Okay, here we go. Now, 
Let's read this and tr see if we can see the red lines, the reading between the lines, because there's something very here we need to understand. Preferable readings less pagan in origin appear to a great extent uniformly throughout this book. As a result, all quotations should be considered adapted from their original context. They may not be in an exact representation of what the author originally wrote, but represent a slightly modified version using English words less pagan in their etymology. Specific quotations are used in this book in an attempt to bring to light certain aspects of Hebraic thought and to clarify specific points in the history of mankind. Let the reader be advised that the authors and or sources quoted in this book may in other places promote views that are directly opposed to the word of Elohim and their inclusion in this book must be in no way seen as a blanket affirmation of an author or source. So this is where, before we even begin this, their own red letters give us a warning in red. This is red, right? Mm -hmm. uh, give us a warning in red that they are going to put in this write-up things that we shouldn't keep as sources, things that are opposed to the word of our creator. Now, we've never had Jasher or Jubilees or Enoch ever people say they're opposed to the word of our creator. And if they do, we should go to that and we should read it as a, a group because I've never seen it. Now, let's continue on through this because we've already had the red letter warnings. The goal of this article is to articulate the 7,000 year plan of Elohim and to give spiritual food in due season to those who are watching for Yahushua, Messiah to return. Full attribution is given for all quotations and illustrations. Parenthetical insertions in scripture as well as, as rain dates which appear behind the names of historical figures in scriptures are commentary and should not be construed as, or as adding to or taking away from the prophetic scriptures. Which is very strange because here they're adding to but they're telling us not to, to worry about the source, right? These are all extremely red flags. Okay, continue on. The authors release this academic work into the public domain for peer review. These pages may contain copyrighted material, the use of which has not been specifically authorized by the copyright owner. In accordance with Title 17 USC Section 107, such material has been referenced to advance understanding of political, human rights, ecological, economic, scientific, moral, ethical, and social justice issues. This constitutes a fair use of any such materials provided for Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Law. All right. There you go, guys. Okay, I'm not going to read the next part. Okay. Now, here we go right here. The heir of the Zadok calendar and irrefutable proofs of the creation calendar. What do they say? There is a saying that the truth speaks for itself. Um, there is probably a saying, but that's not biblical either. Since 2008, CE, after death, the creation calendar at www.torahcalendar.com has been available online, free of charge for public use. This website came about through a series of miracles orchestrated by the providence of Elohim, and it functions as an electronic eyewitness a kind of time machine which actually cites the first visible crescent moon from Jerusalem, past, present, and future. Now, mystical, biblically speaking, do we have any commandments which tell us to view a first visible crescent moon from Jerusalem? I haven't found it anywhere. We, we don't, that's, that's just not in scriptures. We don't, we don't have a, a Torah command that says we need to, to accurately cite the first visible crescent moon. And... Is the crescent moon, are we talking a black moon? Or are we talking 1%? Are we talking 3%? What are we talking about? Because we don't have that in scriptures and there's nothing that will back this up that tells us how to figure this out. It has truthfully shown in advance the Sabbaths, new moons, appointed time and festivals for all who choose to keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of the set apart ones. Here are those who keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua. Those who believe and obey, Messiah will enter the age of life. And in order to obey the Creator's command, one has to know the calendar upon which he has or ordered his universe. Zechariah and Elizabeth observed the creation calendar. The creation calendar with its Shemitah cycle and Jubilee cycle as well, was well known and observed in first century Judea before the second temple was destroyed in 70 CE. Shortly before John the Mercer was born, Luke testifies that John's parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth, kept all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blamelessly. Then it goes Luke 1, 5 through 6. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before Elohim, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blamelessly. From this testimony, one can determine that Zechariah and Elizabeth observed the creation calendar with its Shemitah cycle and Jubilee cycle as Yahushua Messiah did not sin and kept the Torah of Moses perfectly. He also observed the creation calendar. 
Now, um, there is a the Zadok is a like the priest calendar. That's how this follows is the priestly calendar. So during the course of Abijah, uh huh, that was part of like the scheduled time frames. Okay, so do we have any confrontation? Do we have anything that goes against what we just read right here? Nope. Okay. Yahushua, Messiah observed the creation calendar perfectly. In order to keep the commands perfectly, Messiah Yahushua observed the new moons, appointed times and festivals on the creation calendar handed down by Moses. Moshe. Yahushua also, Messiah also would have observed the commands concerning the scriptural Shemitah cycle and Jubilee cycle, because if he would not have observed these commands, he would have sinned. And yet, Yahushua, Messiah, was without sin. I agree. Okay, Hebrews 4.15. For we do not have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our, of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Messiah was offered once to bear the sins of many, and, th and to them that look for him shall, he shall appear the second time without sin to salvation. 1 Peter 2, 21, 22. For to this you were called, because Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us as an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, neither was guile, found in his mouth. Okay? I have no problem with any of that. Mr. Cole, do you have anything? No. Nope. Okay. The Levitical priesthood observed at the creation calendar. See, and they're, they're putting creation calendar as their stuff. Like, they have they have made the creation calendar or they've figured this out, which I find is very interesting from a branding perspective. But as far as all truth, when I come into it, I don't think that they, these, these people are the right of creation calendar. The fact that Zechariah of the course of Abijah and his wife Elizabeth walked in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blamelessly is telling. For around the time of John's birth, Zechariah served under their high priest, Matthias II, and Zechariah would observe the new moons, appointed times, and festivals as the high priest observed them. As Zechariah walked in all commandments blamelessly, he obviously observed the calendar correctly. And as Zechariah was a Levitical priest serving at Mathathias II, one may infer that the entire Levitical priest evidently observed the calendar correctly. The high priest did not have the authority to declare new moons and intercalculate the Hebrew year. That function was reserved for the calendar, calendar council led by the pre, president of the Sanhedrin. Okay. Um, this, this could be debated. Like all of right here, this could simply be debated. Um, we don't have enough information to understand what calendar Zechariah was using on all of this. Um, let's continue on. Although the Sanhedrin and Levitical priesthood were morally corrupt, they observed the creation calendar correctly as Moses instructed. Now, again, people are inferring a lot of stuff from, from Torah calendar. Their Torah calendar is saying that everybody around them, even though they were morally corrupt, they, they kept the laws of Yah. That's, again, you're not going to know that because the people out of the days of Babylon, these people started into moon worship. So the times of corruption were far before any of this ever happened. This is a, when, when people are talking about lunar keeping, Sabbath keeping or lunar uh, month keeping, things of this nature, we didn't know this until after it came out of um, Babylon. Do you have anything, Mr. Gold? <laughs> It's probably for later, but Hit it. like where it says that the priest did not have the authority to declare the new moons. Where does it say in scripture that we have to declare a new moon? Where does it say that we find to declare new moons? Where is the commandment that says we are to have a priest find us a new moon or where's anything inside a Torah at all? And my other thing is, is it says that it was only reserved for the president of the Sanhedrin. Why, yeah. would, a, why would a man be able to declare that? Yeah, it, and it's 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 adding it's really adding to this. When we're talking about priesthood and Sanhedrin, and we're we're not the priesthood, but like the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, we're talking about a religious sect of of uh, people, and these are the same religious people that Messiah rebuked all the time when they said they had to when people like the NIV Bible puts all food has been made cling in the discussion the Messiah had, where it was all about washing of hands and the traditions of men. The Sanhedrin and these guys were the people that were corrupting all of this stuff. So, we'll continue on. From Luke's testimony, one may infer, is that where is that? One yeah. may inf also infer, right there, just checking. Yeah, I think so, it. yeah. From Luke's testimony, one may also infer that the Sanhedrin, the high court of Yisrael, observed the calendar correctly. That is not to say the Sanhedrin and Levitical priesthood were morally above reproach, 
Some of the leadership in the Sanhedrin and Levitical priesthood were morally corrupt in first century Judea, just as many institutions are morally corrupt today. However, at that time, as today, they were good people fighting evil in a corrupt system. Look, this dude doesn't know anything about this. Let me tell you a little bit about what the Sanhedrin says. The Sanhedrin, when you're reading the actual Talmud, there's a section in the Sanhedrin that says you are able to have sex with three-year-old girls. There's an entire section in there on how you can become, how you can corrupt the Goyim. The people who are not Jews, you can do whatever it is you want to do to them. So when you, when this guy at the Torah calendar saying they were good people fighting evil in a corrupt system, guys, these were Torah breakers. These were Talmudic Pharisees that were bringing people into a, a bondage, a real bondage. Okay, let's continue on. Yahushua Messiah was calling out the spiritual leadership of first century Judea for their hypocrisy for abandoning the pure faith of the written Torah and for adding to it and subtracting it from the traditions of the elders. This fact has been lost on many practicing Christianity. These traditions later became codified in the Mishnah and Talmud. Okay, um, guys, both of these things are evil. They're evil to the core. They're very, very, very corrupted. And the crazy thing is, if you are trying to prove a point using these corrupted texts, I don't even know what, 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 why we're here, but let's continue on. So they say at Torah calendar, these traditions later became codified in the Mishnah and Talmud, works revered in Rabbinitic Judaism, Babylonian Talmudism. Although these works are morally corrupt, the truth is a small amount of valuable historical information has survived, which explains the rules of the creation calendar that were used by ancient Israel. And again, you're, this guy is saying that, oh, some of these, these things, they're morally corrupt, uh, it's broken, uh, it's all Babylonian Talmudism, very horrible things. But we have to get to the very middle of this because somewhere in here is the truth. And that truth may be in here, but again, we're using Talmud. We're using things that are Deuteronomy 4.2 breaking things, and we should not be doing this to prove this point. So continue on. you have anything mystical? Not yet. Rush. Hashanah, 6b, right? Pentecost is sometimes on the 5th of the 3rd month, sometimes on the 6th, and sometimes on the 7th. For instance, if both of them are full, it is on the 5th. If both of them are defective, it is on the 7th. If one is full and the other defective, it is on the 6th, okay? This is this has got to be out of the Talmud, right? Right? This is this is Talmudic because... On a 6b. Yeah, we don't... There's no words. We don't have Rosh Hashanah. That is not a, a word that we know. That is a Jewish word. Now, what they're talking about here is, is Pentecost happening on all of these different um, days, or actually months, fifth of the month, sometimes on the sixth month, sometimes on the seventh, so these are various days. The third, the third, third month on the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh. Yeah, and do you understand what they're saying out of the Talmud? Uh-huh. Okay, what are they saying? So they're saying that this day can fall on any of those from when they're counting, from waving the sheath offering, that it can land on any of these dates after the 50th day basically their 50th on the 50th count is there anything homework. in scriptures that says anything like this no okay how did they get this where did this come from i don't know we don't know just somewhere in judaism okay today adherents of rabbinic judaism always observe shavuot shavuot pentecost on day six month three whereas in antiquity shavuot could fall on day five day six day seven or month three okay where does that come from where do we found out that Shavuot in scriptures? Where do we have anything about day five, day six, day seven, or month three? We don't. This is all Judaism. We have month three. Mm -hmm. We know it's month three. Right. But it's not those days. Okay. The quotation from Rosh Hashanah 6b is very instructive as it shows that one, ancient Israel observed the first visible crescent. Okay. <laughs> ancient Israel coming out of Babylon? Sure. They probably did, but there's where the corruption is, right? The first visible crescent. Guys, there is a very very, very wrong thing about determining calendars when we're dealing with this like this. These are instructions. So continue on to two, the Omer count always began day 16th of month one, and that unlike the fixed Hillel second calendar used in Judaism today, any month could have 29 days, a defective month or 30 days, a full month in the calendar of ancient Israel. Wow. So this is, he, he's taking in Talmudic stuff to prove all this point. This is this is what I feel is very deceptive in this because there's a lot to be discussed in this and when you call yourself the authority on any of this, that's dangerous. And people will fall into this, people will be on the wrong days. It's a mess. Truth is important because it leads to Yahushua Messiah and the age of life. 
Without truth, one's mind will be locked in. What some would call a quantum entanglement of lies, many teachers who believe Yahushua of Nazareth is the Messiah incorrectly teach that Shavuot is always on the first day of the week. But this is not the truth. Neither is Shavuot always on day six, month three, as is taught in Judaism. Neither is Shavuot always on day 15, month three, or, or the first day of the week as proponents of the Zadok calendar would advocate. Okay, so I have... Hit it, Mystical. I have scripture that actually backs that up. Backs what they say? What, on the 15th and the, the first day of the week. Okay. So, if you read Leviticus 23... Okay. It goes step by step of what we're supposed to follow for his appointed times. Leviticus 23.15 says, And from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheath sheaf of the wave offering you shall count yourself seven complete shabbos until the morrow after the seventh sabbath you count 50 days and you shall bring a new grain offering so if you actually go from the morrow after the sabbath not the high sabbath of unleavened bread but the actual sabbath after unleavened bread is over this day starts count on the 26th okay so what is this they say that uh, neither Shavuot always on day six, month three. Okay, so I'm not done yet. Okay. So if you count from the 26th of month one, 50 days, your seven complete Sabbaths, the day after the seventh Shabbat, which is your day 50, will land on a Sunday or first day, and that day is day 15 of month three. Now, if you go to Jubilees, and let me find, I think it's the same 14. Jubilees. Let's just go Let me go here. find it real quick because I just bookmarked it. 14 1. Is it going to take me there? No. 14. I'm going here too as well. 14. Okay. So, and then 14 1. So read 14 1 right there real quick. Okay. 14 1, I think, says this. After these matters, in the fourth year of this week, on the new moon of the third month, the word of Yahuwah came to Abram in a dream, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am your defender, and your reward shall be exceedingly great. Okay, and then we're going to go down here just a little bit, because then it talks about... And he took all of these in the middle of the third month. Of the he... month. And he took these in the middle of the month, and he dwelled at the terebinth tree of Mamre, which is near Kebron. And he brought the three-year-old heifer, and so he was doing... Shavuot to him in the middle of the month. Now I know there's two other references in Jubilees, but I don't remember where they are, but I'll find them and we can put them in the description too, it being the middle of the month. Okay, so what they're saying here is, is not true. I mean, we're getting into a whole bunch of lies mixed with uh, their truth, and they just continue on with this whole thing. So this is what it says, Moses prophesied that Israel would utterly corrupt themselves. Moses taught, and Yahushua Messiah affirms that Shavuot can fall on day five, day six, or day seven of month three, as will be proven later in this article. Knowing how to observe Shavuot Pentecost is important because of this day. The Ten Commandments were given in 1437 BC. The set-apart spirit was given to the Judeans in 34 CE, and the set-apart spirit was given to the nations in 44 CE. Interestingly, Shavuot fell on day seven, month three, in each of these years, Moses prophesied that in the later days, Israel would completely corrupt themselves. Deuteronomy 31, 29. For I know that after my death, you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of Yahuwah, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Sadly, this has come to pass, and evil has befallen us in the latter days since we departed from the truth. However, Messiah Yahushua said that Elijah would restore all things. Um, now, this, I'm not, I don't know so much as this is stuff. Do you have anything else for where we're at right here? Just on back to the Shavuot stuff. Yeah, Shavuot stuff. Hit it. Jubilees 44. Four is talking about Jacob. And he celebrated the harvest festival of the first fruits with an old grain. And in all the land of Canaan, there was not a harmful seed for scarcity of food was over all the beasts and the cattle and the birds and also over man. And on the 16th, Yahuwah appeared to him and said to him, Jacob, Jacob. So it tells you right there, he celebrated the harvest of festival on the 15th, and then on the 16th, Yahuwah appeared to him. Okay. Okay, so we got that as well. All right, so let's continue on. Um, 
I hope you guys can see this is getting kind of uh, sketchy when it comes to this. I want to get into this Elijah. I don't, actually, I don't think of the Elijah thing. Um, what I wanted to see and where it starts getting extremely sketchy is... Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, the corruption of faith is not... Okay, so let's go into this. The corruption of faith does not negate the truth of history. Because um, this gets into a tremendous amount of things, again, that if we are building a calendar platform or we are saying that we have the exact calendar and this is the way it is, if this is how you're building the calendar, this is extremely sketchy. Okay, the corruption of the faith does not negate the truth of history. We freely acknowledge that every religion on earth has been thoroughly infiltrated by the devil and the devil has deceived the whole world. In fact, this truth fulfills prophecy, Revelation 12, 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out about him. However, the fact that Judaism and Christianity have been thoroughly infiltrated by the devil, and that the Babylonian Talmud is morally corrupt and a tool of Luciferianism, does not negate the truth of history contained in some of the Talmud's historical quotations. Again, this is extremely delicate that you are bringing in things that the Jewish historians have put together you you don't know what's true and what's not on any of that upon careful study one will learn that in the first century judea 1500 years after moses the basic rules of the creation calendar were well established and they were not the rules of the 364 day zadok calendar israel as a nation observed the creation calendar from the time of moses long before the babylonian captivity in 612 to 589 bce and millennia before Israel ever became a nation, the pre-flood patriarchs started with Adam, observed the creation calendar. It is an established fact that in first century Judea, a calendar, a calendar council following the directive in Deuteronomy 1950 examined witnesses 15. in order to establish, what did I say? 15. 1915, in order to establish whether or not the first visible crescent had been sighted in the land of Israel at the end of a Hebrew month. Okay, I need to find that. We need to read that up. Deuteronomy 1915. Let's... Uh, it just says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. Okay, so let's go right here. Hold on, guys. Right here, Deuteronomy what? 19.15. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at them saying this is how we find the new month. Um, okay, uh, let's see. What is this talking about? Let's start in uh, 14 to figure out what the context is of this. Do not remove your neighbor's boundary, which those in the past have bound, in your inheritance, which you inherit in the land of Yahuwah, your Elohim is giving you to possess. One witness does not rise up against a man concerning any wickedness or any sin that he commits. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, a matter is established. When a malicious witness rises up against any man to accuse him of turning aside. Okay. This has nothing to do about months. This has nothing to do about anything. This is concerning. It is a command. It's talking about witnesses. And it's talking about more than one witness come up. But what the Torah calendar is saying here is that these witnesses are, are basically scriptural. Like this is this what we're seeing right here. A council in Judea having a a. Uh, a uh, group of people guys this is a whole group of people that are trying to determine a 13th month okay it is an established fact uh actually deuteronomy 1915 by the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter shall be established right if you want to take something out of context these dudes just did this right they basically said that this is the new month and then say look right here 1915 says by the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter shall be established Guys, you got to be credible witnesses. I do not find TorahCalendar.com as, as a credible witness right now. I, I'm sorry. The ancient rules and procedures which the Calendar Council followed in antiquity to proclaim new moons, appointed times, and festivals have been mathematically implemented using advanced computing techniques to produce the creation calendar at www.CorahCalendar.com. Guys, this is where it gets extremely sketchy, right? This is we're, we're dealing with new moons. This is the problem we have right here is that everybody says new moons and I do not believe we're talking about new moons. I think we're talking about new months is what we are talking about. And the translation up to English has failed us. It did not give us what it is we are doing. So these guys, and this is where I actually stopped in reading this myself 
because when they said that they uh, have been mathematically implemented using advanced computing techniques to produce the creation calendar, um, this just sounds like we're really, really going down the bad deep end. So now we're quoting a book, W.M. Feldman, um, The Examination of Witnesses. And what it's talking is about is talking about the calendar, the, the council, right? That they had to, to bring the people in there. And I guess... But let's it's also telling you, look, the 12 month lunar months is only 354, whereas solar is 365. Okay, let's just read this part right here. So this is some man-made book, W.M. Feldman, The Examination of Witnesses. At the mouth of two witnesses shall the matter be established. And again... These people are taking stuff out of context. This is the people that would say all food has been made clean and they go at the mouth of two witnesses shall the matter be established. We all think that all food has been made clean when it hasn't. So here's the calendar council. At first consisted of priests who examined the evidence of witnesses who reported having seen the new moon. And again, we have no Torah command, although it's a probably a good idea to examine the evidence of the witnesses. And when you read the book of Josephus, you find out that the Jews actually added to the command of witnesses because they were having issues with people with credentials. The people that came in, they were trying to say that they were witnesses doing some stuff. They couldn't, they couldn't believe them. So these are all man-made problems, but these are not things that we have in Torah. At a later period, the priests were replaced by three members of the Sanhedrin. Again, people you would not want to follow. You would not want to follow pharisaical, Sanhedrin, Torah-breaking, Torah-adding people who were specifically qualified by their mathematical and astronomical skill, and one of whom was the Nasi, or president of the Sanhedrin. So you have some dude who can do two plus two and figures out what the uh, circumference of a, a, a curve is, then, uh, you know, this is, this is the people they thought was the guys that should be dealing with Yaw's calendar. In the absence of unanimity, the court in increased to five, and if necessary, seven members. Guys, they couldn't even agree on this. Look at this. If you had this figured out, you wouldn't be adding. They, it started with, with a couple of them. Then it went to five. Then sometimes seven when they couldn't figure it out. When they it, couldn't agree. Yeah, when they couldn't agree. They oh, couldn't let's, get it yeah. to their side. We so can't we get need to add more. And, and Yah knows they wouldn't add eight people because they're not going to make things equal on both sides. So there has to be a split thing, right? These people are the man-made traditions that we're dealing with. Okay. Uh, where am I at on this? In addition, number four. In addition to their court, to their duty to examine witnesses, the calendar council also had to decide which year was, was to be made a leap year or embolistic year. The question was originally decided by the state of the crop. For since, and again, that's, that's not biblical. There is nothing in here that tells us when this does it to do this stuff. It's not there. It is when the year turns to a bee, when it's the first of the year. Um, that's when the, the crops are supposed to be good. But say, for instance, they had a uh, famine, right? They couldn't grow crops for years. Do they never, ever have a new year? Okay. For since the lunar year, consisting as it does of 12 lunar months, i.e. of 12 lunations of average duration of about 29 and a half days, lasts 354 days. And this is where everyone gets jacked up, don't they? Everybody's 10 days shy. 10 days short. That's what the, that's what scriptures say. That's what say. Jubilee says. They'll come in 10 days short. And there they go. They figured it out, but they don't know what to do about it. While the solar year lasts about 365 days, the lunar is shorter than the solar by about 11 days. And after about three years, therefore, there is a discrepancy of more than a month between the two kinds of years. So that Passover, for instance, occurring as it does in Nisan, which is a Babylonian name, month one, which should be the first spring month, Deuteronomy 16, number one, would actually be in winter. Hence, if any year the crop was found to stu still be too unripe to allow the omer to be offered at the proper time, the calendar council intercalculated an extra month between Adar, month 12, and Nisan. Okay. Guys. Intercalated. Inter intercalated, sorry. Now, if you want to know the sources for this, the very first source is the Babylonian Talmud. So all of these 13th month or people are all... Jewish. They, they may not say they're Jewish, but if you are doing a 13th month and if you are doing a lunar style month, then you're, you're still back in the days. The second source they have is the Mishnah, right? <laughs> what in the world are we doing? We're quoting this stuff. And we have, that's where the Sanhedrin, that's where we can have sex with three-year-old girls according to the Jews. That's not right. That's not in Torah. That's evil. That's evil in the sight of Yah. Third source, Mishnah, Sanhedrin. Mishnah, right? And this is this is what they say. These are the guys who are doing it. Where is Yahuwah? We have Rabon Shimon Ben Gal Gamio, Gamio, right? These are the people. So why are we fighting and and going? Well, we should be fighting. Why are we going with these kind of people 
that are part of this. All he's quoting right here, everything that this council came up with came out of the Babylonian Talmud and the, and the Sanhedrin. This is not to be trusted, my friends. Read number five. Number five, Babylonian Talmud. Our rabbis taught, and this is from the Sanhedrin 11 A and B, again, the same thing that tells us about three-year-old girls. Our rabbis taught a year may be intercalculated cal calated on three grounds, on account of the premature state of the corn crops, or that of the fruit trees, or on an account of the lateness of the tekuva, literally cycle. Any two of these reasons can justly in, in cal, intercalation, but not one alone. All, however, are glad when the state of spring crop is one of them. So these guys are telling you based upon the spring crop in Israel when a new year begins. That is incorrect. That is biblically incorrect. This place, the Torah calendar, is telling you to believe a whole bunch of Jewish mumbo jumbo. This is not correct. Why should we be doing this, right? Why are we believing the thing that our Messiah fought against? Now, if you guys would like to read the rest of this, I will leave a link for this Torah calendar link if you guys would like to do it. Everything's all talking about Judaism. Everything all talk, talking about um, things that we're not supposed to do and talk and of. all relied on man. Yeah, exactly. So it is all man-made, and this is the closest calendar that we can find out of any of the calendars that actually match up with all of the appointed times and the appointed feasts. And there's no mumbo jumbo about the 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 one percent, the three percent, the 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 moon is blank. It's the same thing year after year. The days are the same when it comes down to it. And so, if you are looking for a calendar that seems l more logical than anything else is out there. This is the one that Boss Clan that we are on, that we have decided we've gone to. And this was after you know, like eight or nine years of Torah keeping and being those guys that look at the moon and blowing our shofars on the new moons. And um, when that's not even that's not even a biblical command, blowing our shofars on the new moons. We, we have others that did it, but there's no such command that says we should do that. Not and, on the new moon, but the new month. Yeah, the new months. Okay, and so with that... Um, Miss Cole, do you have anything else? I don't think so. I think All we right. covered it. I think we covered it. And so for anybody that is uh, on the Zadoki calendar, um, I guess your Passover is going to be on the uh, 2nd of April, it looks like. And so uh, much love to everybody. We love to hear your comments. We, you know, if you guys want to throw comments in, please, please throw them in. But back it up with scriptures. Back it up with something other than I think this or I think that. Um, it just, we, we all think things, but we get things wrong. And so... We want to get this right, and this is something important that I think we should all be able to discuss as adults. People shouldn't be cranky old batters and crying the blues when, when we don't agree. If you have a calendar and it matches and you can get all the appointed times on it, I'd like to hear what that calendar is. But if it's doing a 13th a month or something Jewish or in Judaism, I'm not interested. Have a very good day. We're out.